All right. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, I'm uh, talking today about the uh, 2010 water use compilation that the U.S. just puts together. Um, so I'm going to give you first just a little bit of background on the uh, National Water Use Program. Uh, well, we're going to talk about the sources of our data, uh, the results of the 2010 okay. compilation, uh, look at the comparisons of uh, the Nebraska results uh, from 2010 to what we had back in 2005, and talk about a little bit uh, some of the reasons uh, that we might have had changes since the 2005. So obviously, as we've talked about today, water use is very important. Um, we need to know how much water we're using currently and be able to tell uh, how much water we're going to need for future. Um, so the USGS has taken it upon themselves uh, since 1950 uh, to collect, uh, to estimate water use uh, every, we do it on a five year uh, period, so every five years. Um, and uh, right now we report it, uh, each state reports uh, to the national uh, water use team. Um, I'm the I'm the representative for Nebraska, um, and we do it on a county by county basis. Um, the categories that we report are aquaculture, livestock, mining, thermoelectric, irrigation, uh, public supply, self-supplied, domestic, and industrial. And uh, these are reported both by the source uh, as groundwater, surface water, as well as whether these are fresh water sources or saline. Uh, so the National Water Use Team, uh, they actually compile half of uh, the Nebraska data for us, the aquaculture, livestock, mining, and thermoelectric. Um, and then we've worked with the NRDs. Um, uh, Pat O'Brien, who I think I saw earlier, helped with, uh, he was with the Nebraska Association of uh, the Resource Districts. Uh, he helped with the public water supply data and uh, some of the other data. Um, and then uh, DNR helped with a lot of the surface water irrigation data. Um, and then uh, uh, the self-supply domestic are just estimates that come from the data that we get from our public supply results. So the, the aquaculture is based on the uh, uh, National Agricultural Statistics Service from USDA, as well as the 2007 um, USDA Census of Ag. Uh, the 2007 data is, uh, is the closest to 2010 that was available at the time of compilation, so that's why that was used. Um, and uh, they provide numbers as far as number of um, fisheries facilities um, and uh, how much how much product they're selling and that kind of thing. And they uh, the National Water Use Team develops estimates of how much water is used for those facilities. Uh, livestock is also based on the Census of Ag results. Uh, based on animal populations that they that uh, the USDA provides. And then the, the mining is developed actually by the USGS Minerals Information Team who uh, work with, uh, they work with the producers of uh, all the different, all the different raw minerals to develop estimates um, based on how much production they have. And the thermoelectric is from the Department of Energy's Ener Energy Information Administration. So, uh, the, as I mentioned, the Rest Water Science Center, uh, we take care of the irrigation side of the estimates. Um, so, as with any, as with any of these data sets, uh, the, the amount of data available increases the uh, the success of these estimates. So, um, as was mentioned previously, there are some NRDs that have metered data. So, in those cases, we have really good data, obviously, for the counties that those cover. Um, there are other counties where only part of the county is within the NRD, and so we have partial coverage of those counties. And there's also some, ca some NRDs that have voluntary metering that goes on, and so we were able to use that as well. 
Um, and there are also some counties that have no meter data at all. Um, and so we have to use uh, estimation tools, and uh, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, so counties that have the partial meter data, we took that data and we applied it to, um, we have certified acres that are provided by the NRDs, and uh, so we estimated a water use uh, application amount based on the meter data that we did have and applied it on those certified acres, um, and you, as well as using the uh, registered wells database. <coughs> So for counties with no meter data, um, for those of you that were here this morning, uh, Steve gave his talk about the soil water bal balance model. We used that as our basis, um, and then we did some, we added some correction factors based on meter data that we had from 2009, um, the comparisons we had between the results of his model and the, and the meter data, um, because as we know, just because um, we think the crop needs a certain amount, that doesn't mean that's exactly what uh, the producers are going to apply. So we had to use a correction for that, as well as obviously climate in 2009, which is when the, the most recent model was run, is different than it was in 2010. So we had to use a correction for that as well. So for surface water, we worked with DNR to get uh, the registered uh, surface water rights um, for individuals and and then also the canal diversion records. Um, so DNR divvies out surface water rights on a basically on a one cubic foot uh, per second per acre which is a little confusing but um, from talks with them you can estimate that basically uh, one CFS per acre works out to that. That should be applied to set about 70 acres, and so we were able to use that to estimate uh, the total uh, volume, um, and then um, the amount applied. We we just used the crop need and looked at the uh, looked at precipitation data, and just went off that. Um, for the canal data, I want to mention that uh, the seepage seepage information that came out of the uh, some of Steve's work was also used to help um, because we're concerned with the withdrawal not actually the amount that's applied um, it's not the cons consumptive use it's how much is taken out of the system so we took uh, since the seepage isn't actually going uh, to the field um, we we re uh, reduced our amounts by whatever uh, that canal was rated at um, we did not, however, factor in um, evaporation. So. so for public supply, um, we, as I mentioned, with Pat O'Brien's help, we surveyed all community water systems throughout the state. Um, we were able to get a 66% um, return on that, which I thought was pretty good. Um, and so for the non-responders, obviously, we had to estimate uh, estimate their withdrawals and so we uh, we based our estimates on the systems that did report within that same county if we didn't have enough data from that county we used bordering counties and grouped them by city population size so because obviously a smaller town isn't going to have the same kind of users as a larger city like Lincoln would have so we based it on size and area as well so the self-supplied domestic um, the estimates were used, uh, we took the public water supply estimates that uh, an average for those that had less than a thousand people, um, and then we took the census information from 2010, looked at how many people lived in the county, and then uh, the public water supply systems report, they give a number of how many people they believe are receiving the water. Now. Some issues arise with that in cities like Omaha and Lincoln, obviously. Um, you have large apartment complexes, and um, the public water systems basically report on a number of connections. So you could have a lot more users than are actually being reported. So we found there's definitely uh, to take, we definitely need to take that with a great assault. So um, for industrial, um, I'm need to mention this is just self-supplied industrial because many industrial companies take from the uh, public water systems themselves. 
So this is just for the self-supplied. Um, we also surveyed them based on standard industrial classification codes. Um, the National Water Use Team basically gave us a big list of companies that they said these are probably our primary water users and we targeted them for survey results. Um, so out of the 719 that we surveyed, 190 replied. Only 40 the, 49 of those reported as being self-supplied. Um, and then of that, of the uh, 719, um, we, uh, so the 100, there was 190 responders, but there was 33 other companies um, that had DNR registered, had registered wells. And so we took it upon ourselves to estimate for those, uh, for those companies based on the fact that they had registered wells and most like, so most likely they were going to use those. All right, so here's our 2010 data. Um, not surprisingly, irrigation dominates because I mean that's why it's, most of the talks are about irrigation today, and that and uh, uh, but so public supply was second, uh, livestock third, and then uh, all the rest were below 100 uh, million gallons per day. And there's a breakdown of groundwater versus surface water, about a 75 to 25 split there. Um, uh, with such a large amount of the High Plains Aquifer in our state, that's, I don't think that'd be surprised to anybody as well. And here's a breakdown by county. Um, this is total water use. Um, uh, I want to make sure you realize, this is not uh, normalized by area of the county, so this is just total water use. So um, some of this is driven by the size of the county, but also you'll notice that along the Platte River, where there's a lot more water available, um, you have higher water use up here by the North Platte. There's higher water use there as well. Um, all right, and here's this is uh, this is just to show the changes from uh, 2010 to 2005. We had an overall decrease of 31%. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but we'll see that on the next slide, um, based on a 33% decrease in irrigation. Um, but I wanted to show I wanted to show this one so that you could see that although the overall decrease, there were increases in some categories such as industrial and thermoelectric are the main ones. So as I mentioned, uh, so this slide shows the reduction in irrigation a lot better. This is on a linear scale now. And it also, it also highlights the fact of uh, how irrigation dwarfs pretty much anything else. So, All right, so why did irrigation and public water supply decrease from, 2000, uh, from 2005 to 2010? Well, two main reasons. Uh, one, the climate was generally wetter in 2005. Um, obviously, if we would have done this survey in 2012 with our drought, I think our results would have been a little bit different. Um, also, technology. Um, we found that there are still people moving from flood irrigation to uh, pivot irrigation. There's people that are moving from pivots to more high efficiency systems. Um, and so that's another uh, contributing factor. And uh, so why did industrial and thermoelectric increase? Although these are on a much smaller scale, they still did increase. Well, one, we found there were some, there were some new companies. Um, also with thermoelectric, there are some, uh, some companies or some plants that were running an open system where they were just using it for once through cooling and they sent it back into the stream. Um, some of those did use it as a, a continuous process in a closed system. Um, also, some companies that we weren't able to get data for in 2000, 2005, so we had to estimate at that time. We were able to get data from them in 2010, and we found that the 2005 estimates were probably biased low based on these 2010 results. So in summary, the uh, USGS collects uh, uh, water use data every five years um, with on aquaculture, livestock, mining, thermoelectric, irrigation, public water supply, and self-supplied domestic and industrial. 
There's multiple data sources and multiple estimation techniques used for this. Um, and then, as we, as we just mentioned, the 2010 water usage was overall less than 2005, but there were certain categories that, that increased. Um, decreases were mainly related to the climate and possibly uh, technology improvements. Um, and the increases uh, related to methods of estimation, having more data, and that kind of thing. And, uh, and just changes in general operating procedures of some of the industry, industries and thermoelectric plants. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, JP Trailer from USGS who uh, helped me work on this project and uh, uh, feel free to provide any questions. Correct. Correct. So I found it interesting that even though most of the usage is groundwater usage, that the areas that you showed that had the most usage were around rivers. Do you know if that was coming from surface water then? Um, there was definitely more surface water usage in those areas, and that definitely contributed to that. Um, but also, uh, generally, there's a lot more wells you know, along the Platte River. And shallow wells and yeah 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 uh, we did not no we did not do that Mm -hmm. It's it's considered groundwater for this for this project. Yeah, yeah. Now MUD does use surface water as well, but I'm sure you're aware of that too. But all right, thanks very much.